Hello to my um, ethics class. Uh, my name is Joy Van Staldinen, and I will be kind of condensing what we've learned into um, from our book called The Disabled God um, Toward a Liberty of Theology of Disability, um, kind of condensing it down into our first five-minute video on um, the practice of Christian education ethics for individuals uh, based on what we kind of see in this book. So um, to kind of do it concisely, I have started by um, kind of breaking it down based on the holistic character ethics grid that we see in the kingdom, excuse me, the kingdom ethics book by, um, I apologize, by Greg Stacy. So the first thing that we see is the way of seeing in our first box. Um, and the, I, I would say what the book gets out the most for an individual, an individual ethic takeaway is, is strate strategies for social change. So as Christ followers, we're called to, to, to live our lives and to make the world a better place. And that's what Christ came to do. So if we're going to um, love each other as Christ loved us in the church, um, that calls also especially to the marginalized, which happens to be a lot of times individuals with disabilities. So um, if, we, if we make the social change, um, like brought up by Nancy Island in the book, um, we, would be, we would be loving others, we would be ordaining people with disabilities, we would have true, honest friendships with individuals with disabilities, and it wouldn't be limited to a special needs Sunday school class. Um, the next thing on the character ethics grid that I would go over is I would go into way of reasoning. Um, and uh, the, the, the category I would go under specifically would be our um, particular and immediate judgment. Um, I think a lot of times people typically see individuals with disabilities and we, we look at them differently. Um, and, and it may be just because of a physical attribute. It might be because they're acting differently than we're used to seeing. But Nancy helps us to understand that um, they're, they're still individuals of, uh, you know, made by our God and they are very made in his image and um, we're to love each other equally and also treat each other with equal respect. So if we have that, if we can put away our immediate judgment, um, I think Nancy would say we can make the church a better place by not judging people by their outward appearance and by, um, and by loving people for who they really are. Um, in the next box, the passions and loyalties box, I would, I would put that our ultimate loyalty. As I just said before, our ultimate loyalty goes to God and it goes to what God's called us to do. And God has called us to love others and share his word, right? That's not limited to people who are typically developing um, or people who without orthopedic impairments. That includes everybody. Um, also, our ultimate loyalty is to allow others to minister with us. So um, there's no reason why a person with us with a disability shouldn't be ordained. And Nancy kind of talks about that when she gets into her chapter and she talks about the Lutheran church and um, how they started out like with this whole great thing and then it kind of fell apart. Um, but there's, there's no reason why somebody with a disability, even if it is cognitive, can't be ordained and still share the love of God. Um, the last category is our basic conv convictions. Um, and, and what I would go through in that is basic convention, convictions that you would see in The Disabled God by Nancy. Um, I kind of had a tie for two, whether it would be Christ likeness and justice or mission of the church. So in my opinion, based on what I read from the book, it appears that um, what's really important to Nancy is justice. And justice means that just because somebody has a disability doesn't mean they're any less. And it means that they still have a place to serve and they have a right place in the church. And 
the mission of the church, which is why I lump these together, the mission of the church is to facilitate that and to give people a place, to give people a place to serve. A special needs Sunday school class doesn't give somebody a place to serve, but giving them a chance to read scripture next to the pulpit is absolutely a way to serve. Giving a person a chance to light the Advent candles, giving a person a chance to collect uh serve communion and things like that are very important and I think that's what Nancy is is alluding to in, in her book and those are things that we can do as individuals to make a social impact on the greater society. Thanks!